So you guys remember when we covered Solid Snake? You know, the most badass soldier in gaming history? Well, there is another soldier that we need to give our respects to. And he may not be as well known as Snake, but my god, is this dude a f***ing monster. What up, class? Welcome to another episode of Honest Gaming History. On this episode, we'll be covering... Hey, you didn't interrupt me this time. Yeah, well... You do care! Nah, 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 don't get it twisted. I'm just trying to do my job and focus on this video instead of constantly bickering with you. Nah, nah, nah. I know you, nigga. It's because of that good news I shared with you earlier, isn't it? Yo, shut up, man. Ah, see you smiling, bro. You ain't slick. Fine. I'm in a good mood, but hold off on the good news till we get to the end of the video. All right, all right. Let's drop this spoiler warning and get this video started. Raiden was born in Liberia under the simple name Jack. He was adopted by a man known as Solidus Snake and was then on train to be a killer. He and many other child soldiers were molded into the perfect murdering machines. However, Jack was one of the most gifted young soldiers in his unit. So gifted, in fact, that he earned the nickname Jack the Ripper. So just think about that for a second, all right? This kid's first toy was a gun. His version of playtime was to go outside in the battlefield and kill grown ass men. Do you see how fucked up that is? Hey dad, what's for dinner? The same thing we have every day, son. The organs of our enemies and a hint of gunpowder for seasoning. After going through many years of a very traumatic childhood, Jack was secretly taken to the United States along with a bunch of other child soldiers. There, he went through intense counseling to try and suppress his dark past. After he became somewhat stable, the Patriots got their hands on him. This secret organization planted nanomachines in Jack's head. For now, these nanomachines would be used to alter Jack's memories and someone help him in getting over his insane, murder-happy past. However, the true purpose of these nanomachines would become apparent later. Jack continued to hone his skills as a human weapon, while also trying to become a better person by joining the US military. During his many years of fighting for the US, he met a woman named Rosemary, who he slowly fell in love with. However, his relationship with Rose was always crippled by Jack's dark past. And Rose wasn't so innocent herself, but we'll get into that later. Now with all the background mess out of the way, we can finally get to Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty, the first MGS game where Raiden was the protagonist. In 2007, a Metal Gear known as Metal Gear Ray was being transported through the New York Harbor. Saul Snake heard about this, and being someone who hates Metal Gears, he decided to infiltrate the tanker that was transporting the weapon of mass destruction. But Russian mercenaries got to the ship as well, and they were trying to hijack the tanker and take Metal Gear Ray for themselves. But Revolver Ocelot jumped in and finessed on both the Russians and Snake by blowing up the whole tanker and taking Metal Gear Ray for himself. And to make things worse, the blame for all of this was put on Snake, when all he was trying to do was save the world from more Metal Gears. I mean, at least he was assumed dead after this incident, so technically the blame was being placed on a dead man. Still f***ed up though. Two years after this incident, the decontamination facility known as Big Shell was taken over and held ransom by a terrorist group known as the Sons of Liberty. They wanted mad money for this place. Foxhound was like, well, can't have that. And under the leadership of Colonel Roy Campbell, they sent their new recruit to handle this mess. This recruit was none other than Jack, who was originally given the code name Snake, but it had to be changed to Raiden since Snake was kind of taken. So, quick question. Is Foxhound just against teamwork? Because this wouldn't be the first time they sent one man to the job of a whole task force. Listen, man, if you can't handle shit by yourself, then you ain't about this Foxhound life. Well, okay then. As Raiden begins his first official mission with Foxhound, he runs into a possible ally who looks strangely similar to Solid Snake named Iroquois Pliskin. And when I say strangely similar, I mean this dude looks just like the whole Foxhound agent. Almost to the point where it makes no sense how Raiden wasn't insanely suspicious from Jump. Anyways, Raiden also finds out that the Sons of Liberty are not his only enemies. There is a former anti-terrorist group known as Dead Cell that is working with the Sons of Liberty in the Big Shell. And to make things even more confusing, Raiden is told that the leader of Dead Cell is Solid Snake himself. So we have a guy who looks like Snake, another guy claiming to be Snake who's working against Raiden, and anti-terrorist groups joining terrorist groups? The f*** is going on here? 
So Raiden and Pliskin begin working together to take down Dead Cell and the Sons of Liberty. As this mission continues, Raiden finds out about the Patriots, discovers that his adopted father, Solidus Snake, is the actual leader of both Dead Cell and the Sons of Liberty, and finds out that Iroquois Pliskin was actually Solid Snake this whole time. Wow, who would have thought? Along with all that, Raiden discovers that the Big Shell was just a cover for another Metal Gear that was being developed, the Arsenal Gear. This Metal Gear had an AI known as GW built into it that was meant to help control other Metal Gears. Raiden was like, Welp, can't have that. So he and Snake worked together to not only put an end to the majority of Dead Cell, but install a virus into GW so the Metal Gear rays that were on Big Shell could not function properly. But after all that mess, Raiden starts finding out some shit. And this shit is pretty intense, so prepare yourself. All right, so it turns out that this whole mission wasn't even legit. By that, I mean that everything that went down since the tanker incident was completely orchestrated by the Patriots. And Raiden was just a chess piece in this whole elaborate plan. Allow me to explain. The Patriots, who actually controlled the GW AI, were using this mission as a way to kinda sorta test Raiden. Those nanomachines they placed inside of his brain was actually a backup system for GW. The Colonel wasn't even real, he was just a construct created by GW. Hell, even Rose was in on this shit. Rose was a Patriot spy meant to keep tabs on Raiden this whole time. She was in on this whole plan to make Raiden the main puppet of the Patriots. And she tells Raiden all of this, which gets him pissed. But then she admits that she actually did fall in love with him. And apparently she's pregnant with his child. So Raiden is now at a point where he doesn't know what's real and what's not anymore. And then his girlfriend drops his pregnancy bomb on him. How does one even fathom all of this? Amidst all this confusion, Raiden realizes that he can't just sit down and do nothing. Solid Snake is the only problem that he has left to take care of, but Raiden is conflicted about taking out his adopted father because this is exactly what the Patriots want. But Solid can give two shits about Raiden's emotional state. He knew that Raiden had a backup of GW implanted in his brain, so he needed to kill Raiden so he could obtain the information he needs to destroy the Patriots. So Raiden fights and kills Solidus thus putting an end to his first mission. He then tries to join Snake on his mission to rid the world of Metal Gears, but Snake doesn't need all that angst in his life, so he denies a request. Afterwards, he meets up with Rose and somehow finds the courage to forgive her. Bruh, the woman lied to you for years, and you're just gonna forgive her like that? <laughs> Raiden, you are way too nice. I would have given that bitch the illest dub. Some time goes by, and during this time, Raiden and Rose begin living together. However, memories of his past begin to resurface, which ultimately leads to their relationship falling apart. Or maybe Raiden was still tight about the whole, my girlfriend was actually a spy for the Patriots mess. That's a good reason to get pissed and leave. He started working for the Paradise Lost Army. During this time, he found out that Rose had a miscarriage and ended up marrying Roy Campbell, the real one, not the GW construct. That trifling bitch. While working with the Paradise Lost Army, he was tasked with helping them find the remains of Big Boss. This mission led him to get captured by the Patriots. Again, the Patriots ruthlessly experimented on him and ended up replacing most of his body parts with enhanced cybernetic upgrades, thus turning him into a cyborg. The Paradise Lost Army managed to save him and remove all the nanomachines that were implanted by the Patriots but they could not bring his body back to its normal human form. So Raiden continues to seclude himself because he sees himself as a monster, but he ends up running into Snake for a second time in 2014. So this brings us to Metal Gear Solid 4, the last MGS game where Snake is the protagonist. In this game, Snake is tasked with taking down Liquid Ocelot, a former agent of the Patriots. Liquid is trying to use an AI known as the Sons of the Patriots to control private military companies and steal the Patriots grasp of the world. Raiden and Snake know they can't have that, so they work together along with other people to not only defeat Liquid, but delete the AI that controls the Patriots. After this mission, Raiden went through another surgery that made his cybernetic body look a little more human. Rose then confronts him with their son, John. Wait a goddamn minute. Didn't Rose have a miscarriage? And didn't she also marry Roy? Nah fam, that was a lie to trick the Patriots into thinking that Raiden was a lone wolf. If it looked like Raiden didn't care for his wife and son, then the Patriots would have no reason to try and kidnap them and use them against him. All this was meant to make Raiden's life easier. So she made his life easier by lying to him again and then making him think that his son wasn't even born? Yeah, pretty much. Mm, okay. 
Please don't tell me he forgave her after this. That is actually exactly what he did. He embraced his family and promised to stick with them. Bruh, all this woman has done so far is lie, lie, and lie. How can he still forgive her? I don't know, man. Love is a powerful thing. Yeah, but it's not powerful enough to make you do dumb shit like this. This coming from the guy who is most likely to do said dumb shit because of love. Yeah, yeah, let's just continue the video, please. After the events of Metal Gear Solid 4, the economy fell into a deep recession. This was because the world economy was making most of its money through war. With the world slowly moving to a state of peace, the money that was being made from purchasing weapons was quickly declining. This left Raiden in a tough spot because he had to find a way to provide for his family. So Raiden joined the private military company known as Maverick. There, he mostly did bodyguard work so he could stay away from the violence of war. Everything was great until one mission in particular. In 2015, Raiden joined Maverick in their efforts to rebuild an African country that was recovering from a civil war. This mission continued for three years. During this time, Raiden ended up befriending Nomani, the country's prime minister. Then, in 2018, a PMC known as Desperado sent an army of cyborg soldiers to attack the country. Raiden wanted to stay and protect the prime minister, but Maverick needed him to defeat the attacking cyborgs. This forced Raiden to lead the prime minister's side, thus allowing Sundowner, the Desperado leader, to swoop in and murder Nemani. Enraged, Raiden went after Sundowner, but another cyborg named Jet Stream Sam came in and whooped Raiden's robotic ass. To lose to somebody with a nickname like that must have been embarrassing, bruh. Luckily, his friends at Maverick found him, and thanks to a German cyberneticist nicknamed Doctor, he was fitted with a new and more powerful cybernetic body. Now it's time to get some sweet revenge. Raiden specifically went on missions that had to do with Desperado. He wanted to figure out what the motives of this PMC were and take them down. And by missions, we mean running around and murdering other cyborgs in the most epic way possible. Over time, he found out that Desperado was trying to collect the brains of children and use them to create cybernetic soldiers. They were sick of this short time of peace and wanted to rebuild the war economy. This gave him even more reason to stop this crazy PMC. Through more investigation, Raiden discovered that there was another entity working together with Desperado. That entity was another PMC known as World Marshal. World Marshal was Desperado's cyborg supplier, thus making them the root of Raiden's problems. And there was one man who was strongly connected to both Desperado and World Marshal. That man was Steve Armstrong the senator of Colorado. Raiden now saw who his target was. If he exposed Armstrong, then he could cause both World Marshal and Desperado to fall apart. But Raiden was technically not allowed to just attack another PMC without provocation. It wasn't legal, so for the protection of his friends and loved ones, he had his family stay in New Zealand and quit Maverick so they would not get in trouble for his actions. Then Raiden started slowly taking down both World Marshal and Desperado. His efforts finally led him to Stephen Armstrong, who had his body enhanced by nanomachines. Raiden finds out that Steven plans on becoming president of the United States in 2020. Under his rule, he would use PMCs to rebuild the war economy so he could end all wars. He wanted to purge the weak and rule a country composed of only strong individuals. In his version of America, people could fight and die for what they believed in, nothing else. So he wants to use war to end all wars. Pretty much. And purge the weak so that only the strong can survive. That's right. Uh, somebody come get their boy, cause this dude is crazy. Raiden right, hears him out and is like, nigga you crazy. Then after a grueling battle, he kills Armstrong, thus saving America from the most insane president in history. After these events, Maverick asked Raiden to rejoin them, but Raiden declined. Instead of working for a PMC, he decided to fight his own war, against all the murderous cyborgs that have the balls to catch his fade. What's going on, Doji fam? It's your boy, the Black Master Doji. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History. Like I always say at the end of these videos, I apologize for not going in complete depth with this character. I know I missed a lot of stuff, but to keep these videos at a certain time limit, I have to kind of exclude all the semi-important shit and non-important shit to keep all the important stuff out there. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. Um, 
Feeling like 3K is a number for us this time. So let's try to get this video to 3K likes in 24 hours. I believe in you guys, we can do this. Huge shout out to Sabrina, Purple Inferno, and all my other dope patrons that make videos like this possible with their kind monthly donations. If you also want to help the channel with your funds, feel free to go to my Patreon page in the description below and find out how you can support the channel for as measly as $1 a month. Or you can do this whole membership thing that YouTube just implemented where you can pay $5 a month and get this cool little icon next to your name. That helps out too. However, know that if you are not able to donate any money, sharing, liking, and commenting is always helpful. Let me know who else you want to see me cover in Honest Gaming History in the comment section below. And that's pretty much it. See you later, guys. Oh, shit, yeah, I forgot. The news, right. Um, Conscious is coming back. Fall. It's a definite. If we get this video up to 5,000 likes by Sunday, I will have the trailer out by Friday. Yeah, get hype. We lit.